All right, let's get started. Um, those of you that are here, welcome. Um, we're glad you're here. We are desperately hoping that uh, what we have today is going to be valuable to you. Whenever I'm speaking in an event or doing something online, I gauge success as whether or not you get one snippet of value, right? So if we say 100 things and 99 of them you've heard before, but there's one thing that you haven't heard before that provides value to you or brings some sort of uh, new education or knowledge, then I consider that time well spent and I consider that successful for us. So I'm hoping that all of you will stick around to the end of this thing, because even if in the first 15 minutes, it seems like a review, um, which it may be, understand that the deeper we go into this content, the more and more granular and the more uh, kind of advanced and direct we're going to get on specific types of ranking and um, you know, launching practices. So again, if we start off and you're like, man, this is kind of some old information, just bear with us. Cause we know that some folks on here, um, you know, might not be as, as familiar with some of this stuff as some of us are. So the further we go, the deeper we're going to get. So, uh, bear with us. So I'm going to start, um, sharing my screen. And while I'm doing that, Clayton, if you would just briefly introduce yourself to everybody. Yeah, I'm Clayton Atchison, kind of already talking about this. I'm originally from St. Louis, Missouri, been in Puerto Rico. It's great tax benefits down here. I've uh, been here since 2018. Never expected to be here six years, but just fell in love with it. Um, I've been in the e-commerce space like full time since 2014. Did some arbitrage, uh, private label that I still do. And now I'm director and general manager of PixelMe. For the past year and a half, two years, I've really focused on external traffic, Google ads, meta ads. TikTok and um, how that affects your on Amazon um, organic rank and algorithm. And we'll get into some of that. But yeah, I'm kind of the uh, external traffic nut, uh, kind of been obsessing with it for the past year and a half. You didn't so. want to say the word guru, did you? You were thinking it, but you didn't want oh, to say it. That's, that's weird because that's true. And yeah, you're <laughs> shocked on. I could see it. Um, and my <laughs> name is Tim Jordan. I've been in the Amazon game since about 2015. Uh, developed several private label brands. Some of them have exited, some I still operate right now. And uh, I just get to work with a lot of cool thought leaders and a lot of cool communities. And I get to see a lot of different things in Amazon that work. And as I'm on my travels or I'm uh, cruising online communities, one thing that gets talked about a lot is, you know, how to win on Amazon. And really the holy grail is organic rank. And we're going to talk about that today. If you have any questions or thoughts, I know there's a chat function. A lot of you are using it right now, but there's also a QA and a function. So down there in that bottom pane of buttons, there's that Q&A section. That'll help us organize your questions a little bit better. We're going to go through these slides, and then we have uh, intentionally set aside time to discuss um, you know, the questions that you have. So again, if you'll put it in the Q&A section instead of just the comment section, it'll be a whole lot easier for us to organize those at the end as we continue. So we're going to go through why organic rank matters. Again, that might be a little bit of a, uh, uh, you know, what's the word I'm looking for? Novice. Repeat for some of you. Yeah. Uh, how ranks determine listing optimization, the role of external traffic, and then our playbook for external traffic. So organic rank matters because um, it is essentially the lowest cost sales with the highest amount of eyeballs on your product. 20 years ago, if we were shopping, we'd go to the shopping mall. And everybody at the shopping mall, all the stores and all the vendors would put their items that they thought were most compelling in that front window. They wanted to gain people's attention, right? Because if more people saw it, the more likely to buy it. Same is true on any marketplace, whether it's Amazon or others. If you can get in that front shopping window where people are showing up to look for a product or maybe uh, options for products, then being in that front you know, window, being most viewed is more likely to get you sales. So as you achieve higher organic rank for specific keywords, right? I'm not talking about BSR. I'm not talking about category rank, but for specific keywords, then your product is more likely going to be seen. And that will obviously turn into more money and cheaper acquisition of those customers too, because you don't have to necessarily have to pay for that customer. And we know that on mobile and on desktop, on Amazon specifically, 75% of users do not venture past page one. They don't do it. And I know that mobile is a little bit longer. So this is an average. The 75 is an average. Um, but it's a good number to go off of just for our own learning here. 75% of people don't go past page one. So whatever keywords that you're targeting for your products, that page one placement is monumentous and hugely important. So again, a little bit of a review here. 
Uh, this has also been hotly contested over the past few years, but I think that people have kind of settled on this as the um, primary list of factors affecting rank. Listing optimization, right? And this goes into Amazon ranking your product for keywords because Amazon is detecting that this is a complete listing. And then listing optimization is also going to help your conversion rate, which is listed lower. Pricing and promotions, all the Amazon uh, gadgets and widgets and levers and things that you can pull are very important. Customer reviews and ratings for the product itself. We know that the higher star rating is, the higher Amazon is typically going to rank it for a specific keyword and the number of ratings is important. And then having relevant traffic. And relevant traffic, uh, of course, is going to tie into things like the conversion rate, although it can be a little bit disassociated, that's fine. But the more people coming to your product and looking at it and being interested in it is obviously going to impact Amazon's desire to show you higher up in those search rankings for those keywords. <coughs> Excuse me. And then conversion rate is very important. The conversion rate is going to tell Amazon that you are a relevant product for that keyword that you're trying to rank on. Anything to add here, Clayton, or did I do a pretty good job? Uh, I think you did a great job, Tim. No, seriously. Um, I think you covered it all. I think uh, it's pretty straightforward. And just reiterating what Tim said before, like we're starting with the most basic and then we're going to get more and more detailed and and uh, higher level here very shortly. So if some of this is uh, just, you know, feeling like something you've heard 10 times before, just uh, stick in there because there's more to come. Um, Today, we're going to talk about organic ranking um, kind of made easy. We're going to talk about what I believe is the lowest hanging fruit to organically rank and the thing that is most easily attainable. But there are a lot of places and a lot of levers and widgets and gizmos and gadgets that we can utilize when it comes to ranking organically on Amazon. These are some things that you should probably be aware of, although we're not going to go deep into these today. The first one is live shopping capabilities. So Amazon Live, um, you know, most of you are familiar with that. Think of it as a QVC for Amazon. There's some pretty cool things you can do with content creators in Amazon Live to get your product featured. Uh, enhanced content. We know that A plus, now it's uh, EBC, used to be A plus content if you have brand registry to optimize the buyer experience and the shopping experience with brand stores. And um, even on the product pages, there's a lot more details and a lot more cool stuff that you can do to market and show that product. Social posts. Uh, guys like Norm Farrar have been talking about Amazon posts for a long time, and I still feel like people are missing the, the train on this. Amazon posts is a free tool. It's a free function. It's a free feature that everybody should be using that allows you to utilize essentially social media posts within the Amazon platform to get um, eyeballs and get awareness of your products and your brand. Voice search optimization. Uh, can't go deep into that today, but Essentially, many of us have started to optimize our listings for the keywords that are pulling up in the autofill, right? On the Amazon um, platform, the Amazon you know buyer side. And the way that people type things is oftentimes different than the way they say things. And we know that voice shopping is becoming much more prevalent when it comes to especially like Alexa and the Alexa app but also just searching in places like Google where then Amazon listings appear. So be thinking about at least backend optimization for the voice uh, version of what people are searching for. Sustainability messaging, that's great branding. Um, people are starting to look for this. Amazon is starting to prioritize some of this kind of stuff and then utilize great review generation, right? Now we're not talking about doing anything that's black hat. We're not talking about doing anything against terms of service, but you can build your verified reviews by using things like the Vine program or by requesting um, experience reviews like seller experience reviews, uh, which is all automated through Amazon. And you can use tools like Manage by Stats to further automate that with custom messaging. And that will oftentimes spur people to leave a product review as well. Clayton, anything I missed on that or good? No, no. Crushed it. All right. So um, some more, a little bit more advanced listing optimization tactics. I always tell people that we're not selling products, we're using keywords. So incorporate very, very relevant related keywords and to uh, and variation of those keywords, long tail keywords to the back end of Amazon, right? A lot of times we think of our garlic press as a kitchen accessory because that kitchen accessory has so much search volume, but it's such an irrelevant thing. There's a million different uh, types of kitchen accessories that aren't garlic presses. So focus on garlic press, garlic squisher, squisher for garlic, press for garlic, 
all the different specific keywords. And just to be clear, don't go and sell garlic presses. That's like the epitome of the saturated product. But I think you get what I'm saying. It still works to add keyword images to the uh, back end, like the meta um, descriptions of images, right? Great place to stuff keywords because Amazon, just like Google, is still indexing those keywords that are stuffed in the metadata of images. Um, again, encourage reviews and Q&As. Amazon gives us a lot of opportunities on our listing to have people basically generating content through the questions, through the reviews, through the review videos, and all of that helps optimize for specific keyword indexing and ranking because it's still attached to that listing. Right now, we're seeing kind of a change in the way that Amazon prefers optimizing listings in that they want it to be more buyer focused and smooth as opposed to keyword stuff. I remember back in 16 and 17, man, you just shove as many keywords in that title and you can rank for anything to the moon. It was easy. But now we're seeing that the listings that are just piled full of keywords, especially relevant keywords, do not rank as well. And it has something to do with a decreased conversion rate because it looks cheesy, but also Amazon is a little confused. They don't know what relevant product you have because you're stuffing all of these keywords in that might not be relevant. And then we suggest that you continuously refine those keywords. That's because things change, right? You could have more competition on your root keywords, your base keywords that you're targeting, and you want to move to some less competitive keywords. The autofill feature on Amazon could change also. So where people were looking for one specific variation of a long tail keyword, as that autofill changes, people start migrating to using that other long tail keyword. So you want to consistently and constantly be doing keyword research. You can use stuff like seller tools and manage by stats to do that. Uh, manage by stats is now free, by the way, one of the largest um, uh, kind of repositories of keyword uh, research and sales research in the world. It's free. Um, but make sure that you're constantly going back and looking at it. It's really easy to optimize our listing, be ranking well. And then six months later, we realize, hey, we haven't even checked on this and realize that the keywords that we're focusing on are not the top ones anymore. Uh, make sure that titles and product images are very, very uh, heavily optimized. Everybody looks at the title, everybody looks at the product images instantly. They don't always look at all the bullet points and descriptions. It's important, but not nearly as important as title or images. And when we think about optimization, we just covered a lot of stuff. Uh, could be a review. We talked some about some of those external sources um, that may be new to you. You should go check out. But we have to ask why in optimization external traffic matters, right? We could talk about optimization for ranking on keywords for six hours. And Clayton and I are both going to continuously come back to this idea of external traffic, right? External traffic, external traffic. I've been speaking at events lately talking about external traffic. Why is that so important to um, be focusing on and be optimizing for when it comes to ranking? Well, we believe it's because Amazon has a lot of competitors. All right, Walmart's the number two marketplace in English speaking world now. It's coming up fast. Timu, TikTok, Shop, Shopify are obviously all big in the US. And then in other markets, you've got Mercado Libre, you've got Baidu, you've got all these other marketplaces, right? So Amazon, we believe, wants to monopolize, I shouldn't say monopolize, but they want to, I think it's fair to say monopolize your eyeballs, right? They want to um, gain as much market share as possible, like any business would. And they are now heavily incentivizing sellers like us to bring traffic from the rest of the interweb out there, whether it's uh, your own website, whether it's publications, whether it's social media, whether it's advertising platforms or search engines, whatever, directly to Amazon. And they're heavily incentivizing that. And this matters for a lot of reasons. Um, Clayton, I, I want to pick your brain on this a little bit because I know that you've worked with a lot of brands um, with with Elevate, like a like a big publicly known one, on why external traffic matters to Amazon. Can you touch on this? Yeah, 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 I will. And I was just waiting for you to uh, take a pause there. I also wanted to say when we were talking about ranking and how you were talking about voice assistants and things that are changing, one of the, the biggest changes I think that's happening is in the a AI world, right? Amazon created Rufus, this dog that helps you. It's like a personal assistant shopper. And um, Vanessa Hung, also in Carbon 6, and I'm hoping Shannon can like dig up this presentation because I think that's worth actually like that just popped into my head when you were talking. Um, you know, Amazon is now like all the things you said, Tim, like if you keyword stuff too much, you might confuse Amazon, like with what you are. Cause if you're a garage mat where you're supposed to put under a car to like catch oil from leaking and things like that, it can get confused if you're a door garage mat versus like a huge garage door mat and AI is not perfect yet. 
So like going in and figuring out what Amazon AI Rufus thinks you are is really important. And and we'll, it's not the point of today's presentation, but I did just want to mention that was like one more thing that I should have probably added to that slide ahead of time. Now, back to your question, Tim. Um, you, you nailed it. You, you've just been nailing stuff all day, brother. Good job. Um, nice. You know, the reason that external traffic matters is because Amazon thinks it matters. If you're, you know, the CEO of Amazon, you're trying to figure out how to get as many eyeballs as possible on amazon.com all day, every day. People have choices. They can send traffic to their D2C. They can send it to the TikTok shop, which is like blowing up in the past six months. Um, they can send it to Walmart. They can send it a lot of places, right? Anywhere, literally online. And Amazon created for Amazon attribution so that they could help measure and monitor this. And they created the brand referral bonus that we're going to talk about. But Amazon has invested millions and millions and millions of dollars around frameworks to try to send that traffic to try to encourage people, sellers, to send that traffic to Amazon instead of their own website or other competitive websites. And, you know, we had a hypothesis a long time ago that if you do what Amazon wants you to do, it'll feed their algorithm and, and you'll rank better. Um, but we're not the only ones that figured this out. Um, this slide is a sloppy, big slide with a bunch of different quotes, but there's some from Elevate Brands, Seller App, Be Bold, and more. And they're all saying the same thing, some people I am not in this camp have claimed to talk to Amazon reps where they have bold face told them, yes, like the new algorithm cares more about external traffic than anyone in the past by like a country mile. Um, I've never had a conversation like that personally, but I, I personally like, have from Amazon have. folks that have verified. Yes. Off the okay. record, external traffic is heavily, you know, weighed. Okay. I didn't. All right. Well, that was a good layup because I didn't know that. Um, Thanks. But, but yeah, the, um, the simple fact is, is like, there's a ton of case studies. We've done some other companies have done some, and they all come to the same conclusion. External traffic is disproportionately rewarded when it comes to Amazon rank. And it's because Amazon is incentivized to, to incentivize you to bring traffic. They want traffic. You want rank. It's a trade. That's how it works. Um, and on top of that, like. There's a reason why this this next slide that goes into everything I was just saying. It says off Amazon traffic to sending to Amazon is growing rapidly, increasing from somewhere between 20 and 50% year over year. There is a very obvious reason for this. It's because it's working to increase people's organic rank. And in some cases, it's working to create new profit streams. When something is working, that's where you see people flow and start to invest their money and their time. So this number is 0% surprising to me. Um, if you increase your rank by doing external traffic, you're going to do it for more products and you might tell a friend and then word gets out. So, How did you somehow slip in another percentage onto this slide that has like nine that's not even on the slide? You'd be surprised. I'm 100% confident I can do it again if you try. <laughs> um, so <laughs> the other thing here is um, average sellers witness a 15 to 20% boost in sales when using external traffic. Right. So you bring external traffic, your rank goes up, you increase your sales. But the crazy part, and I should have updated the slide, is that you see a 15% reduction in on Amazon ACOS. So you're increasing your sales, but you're actually making more money on each sale. And the reason is because that mix of sales, if you're 50% paid sales and 50% organic sales, if you can have the same number of sales, but move 70% of that to be organic and only 30% of it to be paid because you increased your organic rank, like that's how you grow your business in a profitable and sustainable way. And, um, and the, the term you use for that's right, the halo effect. And I think well, that, that- That's a, a little bit uh, separate, but yeah, it's it's good to bring up right here. Like if you rank for garage mat, you might also rank for garage mat for car, garage mat black, garage mat white. So it's not always- the keywords you're focusing on. But the, the point is, is yeah, like you're going to increase rank on like one keyword and it's going to affect other keywords. So that's true. But the real point here is just that if you can just increase the, if you can increase the, you don't even forget it. Sorry, let me take that back. If you increase sales 0%, but you just stay the same, but more of them are organic because you rank higher, then you make more money. But this slide is showing the opposite or not the opposite. It's showing that not only do you increase overall sales, but you decrease your a cost on those sales as well. So you're growing your business and with each like incremental sale, you're, you're getting more and more profitable. It's a very powerful combination. And I remember, you know, even a couple of years ago, people talked about this in theory 
And we were doing things like publications and we were doing things like press releases and we were doing social media ads and we felt like it was probably helping. And that was before Amazon started even more heavily weighing it, but we didn't know, right? Because there's no way to track that. So I guess it was 18 months ago, maybe even 20 months ago now that Amazon dropped the attribution program. We could actually track that. And now we're starting to see, you know, a year and a half's worth of data to show that, you know, effort spent outside of Amazon driving that organic ranking is just increasing profitability. That's not even including the 10% brand referral bonus, right? And when people say to me, hey, Tim, Amazon doesn't care about external traffic. Like this is all a bunch of crap. You're making this stuff up. My first question is why are they paying us 10%, right? Like they're paying a lot of money for external traffic. And what the brand referral bonus is, is when you drive traffic from outside of Amazon to Amazon using the attribution program, uh, which is just basically a tracking link. If you make a conversion, Amazon will give you a 10% rebate on that sale. So if you sell a $100 item, they give you $10 back. Amazon would not be paying us that money if they didn't value that external traffic. And I realize that, you know, the attribution and brand referral bro program isn't rolled out to all the countries and marketplaces yet, but primarily most people, uh, even if they're selling other places, are also selling in North America, uh, the U.S. So it's it's relevant. Mm -hmm. And let's just like call out something that's pretty obvious here. <clears throat> like nothing Amazon does is completely random. I'm pretty smart over there. 10% uh, now makes it very close to being similar to a Shopify store, right? You, if you're selling on Shopify store, you have to pay a few percent per credit card fees. Um, you know, I think average is 2.9%, call it 3%, whatever, right? And then your, your shipping might be a little bit more expensive, but on Amazon, you pay 15% but that turns down to five. Now your Shopify store and your Amazon store are, are closer to parity. And what Amazon's betting is that they're going to convert better than any other website in the world because Amazon, everybody already has an account. They already have their yep. credit card added, their address. Trust. Yada, yada, yada. Exactly. So Amazon did this in a clever way. So as some of us nerds, even though Clayton yesterday claimed he wasn't a nerd, I was a nerd, which <laughs> might be true. <laughs> um, you know, have been dabbling in this Amazon space and playing around for a long time. One thing that became very kind of crystal clear to me is that we have as sellers limited bandwidth, right? Whether we are ginormous multinational companies selling on Amazon or we're small solopreneurs that are, you know, getting our business up and going, there's only so many things we can do. There's only so much time a day and we see a lot of shiny objects, Right. We see a lot of people talking about influencer marketing and social media marketing and creating our own blogs and working with publications and getting in subscription boxes. And the truth is we can't do it all. And I've talked about a lot of these things as great methods for a long time. And I do believe they're great methods, but things really changed with feasibility and ease when the attribution program came out and we started figuring out how to match keyword searches with keyword searches, which is highly relevant. So Clayton's going to kind of start uh, taking a little more lead here because this is really his nerdery area because you are a nerd, Clayton, whether you deny it or not. I know. Um, I know. On a specific playbook that we've come up with that makes external traffic with high ROI and ease actually possible, right? So we're going to focus on a very specific method here that um, that I think works, what, Clayton, for 80% of sellers? And... Uh -huh. uh, yeah, I, would, I wouldn't say 80% of sellers. I would say 80% 80, of products. Yeah, 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 that's that's right. Uh, I don't know, 80%. Like, I would say 98% of the products that I recommend. Um, it, it, you know, we'll go over, like, some of that in a little bit. But I don't know what, I don't know globally what percentage of products have 4.3 star rating or above. I don't yeah, know globally sure. which one. So, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I'm jumping ahead. I'll let you get into it. But I just wanted to preface and say, you know, external traffic is good. There's a lot of shiny objects out there and ways to drive external traffic that might be unattainable because we have limited bandwidth, we have limited knowledge, or we have limited budget. We can't go out and hire a huge ad agency to create TikTok videos for us and, and try to go viral. So this playbook is the one that we are seeing the most success with for uh, most Amazon sellers. Yep. And I was just uh, responding to Aaron Ferris, who had a question. And uh, I would also say that Aaron, um, you could also can also uh, talk to Seller Assist, which can help you uh, get your title 
unlocked. Vanessa Hong and her team are fantastic at that. Anyway, sorry, I got off topic, guys. I'm back. Okay. Um, was trying to do the Q&A at the same time. So yeah, external traffic playbook. Guys, um, the sh long story short is I'm the director general manager of Pixel Me. We've launched um, thousands and thousands and thousands of campaigns, primarily Google ads to Amazon using Pixel Me. Pixel Me measures all of it. It pulls in the data from Google, pulls in the data from Amazon attribution, puts it all in one place, and it optimizes for conversion, not just clicks, it's awesome software. But long story short, we've been doing this for a year and a half. We've launched thousands and thousands of products and we have aggregated data to tell us what works and what does not. Um, there are exclusions to all of these things uh, that I'll go over briefly, but by and large, these are the general rules. If you're less than 4.3 stars, I would work really hard on getting my star rating up before I recommended to you to do external traffic. So 4.3 stars or above, it's great. Less starts getting a little, little, little questionable. And if you're beneath four stars, I really don't recommend it. Um, super shoppable items have shown to not do great when coming from Google traffic. Um, you know, people that like wear, you know, clothes is a very personal thing. You know, me and Tim might have different styles. He might wear some, some boots that I would never in a million years wear. You know, and when you're talking about like T-shirts and sweaters, some people like different colors, some people like different fabrics, different fits. The list goes on and on. Anything that's very personable, shoppable, things like clothes, jewelry, gift boxes, they're really tough. Have we had success with clothes? Yes. Have we had success with jewelry? Yes. But by and large, like it would need to definitely be above 4.3 stars. It would need to have lots of variations and colors and types for, for me to say, wow, I feel really uh, you know, good about this. And I think it's going to crush. And um, other things that don't work are generally things that are way above the market price. Um, unless they have like really, really high brand recognition, like a Yeti, right? A Yeti uh, cooler, you can get a cooler for 30 bucks, but Yeti is, is a better cooler, but also it has incredible brand recognition. So products that do work are the opposite. Um, 4.3 stars are above. That's fantastic. The more reviews, the better. So if you tell me, you know, I have two equal products, one's 4.4 stars and the other one's also 4.4 stars, but this one has 50 reviews and this one has 5,000. The one with 5,000 is going to convert all day better than the other one. High buyer intent. This is the opposite of what I consider shoppable items. Shoppable things that you want, but you don't really need. Uh, you might shop around for days before pulling the trigger. A hammer is like the exact opposite. Nobody like wakes up on a Saturday and is like, man, I just want to go shopping for some hammers. It's like my favorite thing to do. You've got a nail and you put it through a damn wall. You're looking for a hammer because you got a job to do. You're not going to spend all day buying things like that. So hammers, higher buyer intent, do well. Um, <clears throat> now this next two, I'm going to fly through these, but higher priced items. These crush because for whatever reason, very simple. If you're selling a $20 product on Google or, or advertising a $20 product on Google, the cost per click is about a dollar. Now, if you do a $200 product, the cost per click is about a dollar. It does not scale with the price of the products, which gives expensive products an advantage from a percentage perspective. You know, 5% conversion rate would be pretty good on Google ads. So, you know, if you have to spend a dollar and you got a 5% conversion rate, it means you spend $20 to get a sale. If you got a $20 product and you spent $20, you're, you know, you, you, you just broke even there and then you get $2 back from the brand referral bonus. So you made two bucks on investing 20. It's not much, right? You're underwater. But if you're selling a $200 product, you spend $20 to get a sale, 10%, the brand referral bonus on a $200 product is covering your entire ad cost. You're just getting sales at 0% A cost. We got clients that have dozens of, of products above hundred dollars where their A cost is actually negative. They're getting... A, call, uh, a sale for less than, sorry about that alarm. Don't know what that's for. Um, the, you know, they're spending $200 or selling $200 product, getting $20 back and they're getting a sale every $10 they invest. So they're actually making more money on a Google sale than they would on an Amazon sale while simultaneously increasing their organic rank. That's like the home run perfect solution. So higher priced items do really well, with external traffic and lower priced items I used to say expensive and cheap, but that was the wrong words because uh, something's not just expensive. It, it could just be higher price, but there could be different expensive and cheap have a different meaning to me. So I say higher price and lower price, lower priced items like that $20 product example, you are not going to make profit just from Google to Amazon. 
It's just not going to happen, but that's okay. Because if you increase your organic rank, that goes back to that slide three or four slides ago where you see a you know 15 to 20% increase in overall sales while a 15 to 20% decrease in on Amazon ACoS. So that's where you make your money is with the organic rank. And then last but not least, I already kind of mentioned it, branded keywords crush. If you got brand recognition, um, you should always A-B test sending traffic to your D2C and to Amazon. Every time I've done it, Amazon has always beat the D2C website. Um, but yeah, we can go We can go on to the next slide. Um, this is another thing that Pixelme allows you to do, but even if you don't use Pixelme, make sure you do this. Um, anytime you're making an advertisement, you can add in retargeting pixels. Meaning you can, when somebody clicks on a link, like Tim and three other people, if they have Facebook and I have a Facebook pixel in there, we're going to add them to an audience. And in the future, if I want to, even though it was a Google ad to begin with, if I want to retarget Tim on Facebook or on TikTok, I can. Um, so if you've ever clicked on a product and saw it following you around the internet for days, that's what they're doing. They're retargeting. And there's a reason that they do that. It's and just an example of that, like going back to the hammers, imagine I went to Google and I typed best framing hammer and I clicked the link that maybe went to Amazon. It was Clayton's hammer link and uh, to his hammer listing. Well, we know beyond a shadow of a doubt that I'm interested in a hammer. So if another hammer manufacturer is selling on Facebook, the audience that he has is he's going to say, well, I want to target a certain demographic. All right. There's probably more men that buy hammers than women. So we'll target men of the age from 18 to 60. And then you're showing them hammer advertisements. How many of them are actually looking for hammer? Very, very small amount. Right. But if you can target an audience that had clicked a Google ad for that specific product, you know that 100% of the people in that audience are interested in hammers, right? So this is worth its weight in gold here, being able to retarget and build a very, very relevant audience. Exactly right. And um, this is kind of like a pretty in-depth slide, but long story short, retargeting works. People yeah. that are retargeted, 70% more likely to convert. And, and if you want more information on this, we've got a link later on with some other free resources where we can talk more about that. Yep. Perfect. Um, but yeah, retargeting, no other software that I'm aware of except pixel me allows you to run Google ads, meta ads, et cetera, but also makes it easy to add pixels for retargeting. So that's, it's, it's a special sauce that should, should be talked about and used. Um, so long story short here is just that if you are running, you know, paid pay-per-click campaigns from Google to Amazon, it can help increase your organic rank. And Pixel Me, uh, just shameless plug here, it's Carbon 6 tool. We have, I've spent my pa the past year working with the dev team to create a bunch of automations that automatically walk down cost per clicks on a keyword level. And before I said that, you can optimize for conversion using Pixelme. Uh, Pixelme has got a patent pending software that is the only software that bridges the gap between Google and Amazon. Um, you know, after that click leaves Google, no other software can tell Google what happened on Amazon. Did it bounce? Did it turn into an add to cart? Did it turn into a conversion? Did it turn into a multi-purchase conversion? Bridging that gap allows for Google to optimize for conversions, not just clicks. If you optimize for clicks, you're saying, I'm going to treat a 10-year-old girl the same way I'm going to treat a 50-year-old man because I don't know anything about the ideal customer profile. When you optimize for conversion, you tell Google what the heck is happening after that click leaves. Google can optimize for things like age, gender, time of day, income level, marital status, exact location. And it turns into performance that is about three times more efficient and, and profitable than regular optimizing for click campaigns. So it's Long story short, you increase your rank, you optimize for conversion, and you can create um, new profit streams. So using PPC to, to increase your organic rank works. It's a million case studies, um, and people should be doing this. And once you build your rank, like this says, remember here, paid traffic is like a drug. Amazon sellers are addicted to Amazon PPC because it's the highest converting. It does work. But every single time you're paying more and more and more, it's getting more saturated. Cost per clicks are going up and it's not a long-term solution. The long-term solution is to figure out how to feed the Amazon algorithm what it wants to be fed. And when you tell Amazon what it wants to see, they increase your organic rank and that's sustainable. When you can change your product mix for more organic sales instead of more paid sales, that's, that's when you win long-term. We can go to the next slide. 
Um, so I'm going to breeze past this because I do want to leave time for Q&A. Um, the playbook is that this doesn't work for all products. I'll be straight up and tell you that we have a free ASIN audit where we will go through using your seller ID. We'll go through your entire catalog and we'll tell you, don't even touch external traffic with these 10 products. But with these five, these are absolute winners. And these three, it's kind of a, you know, could, could be good, might not be, but they're on the fence. But we'll tell you all that. Um, so you have to be selective, number one. You have to allow the process some time to work, just like on Amazon ads. But we track the tacos inside of Pixelme. We track your organic ranking on all of the keywords that we target inside of Pixelme. And we track um, your your BSR and other things. So we track all the results in a very like intelligent and learned way to see how this is actually affecting your performance. And then uh, we're cost effective. You try to rank using Amazon PPC, you got to spend 10, 15 times the amount of money that you got to spend using on Google or external ads. External ads, external traffic is so sought after by Amazon right now with the current landscape of TikTok shop taking market share, Walmart taking market share, that they're desperate for external traffic. And um, so it's the most cost effective way to rank that I've seen in 2023 and 2024. And um, yeah, think big picture. Don't just worry about a quick sale. Think about self-sufficiency, which means ranking organically, which leads to long-term profitability instead of short-term profitability by continuing to feed the Amazon advertising machine. So that's uh, that's that. We can go to the next slide. And I think I'm wrapping up here. Well, you know, we made a pretty bold, bold statement, or I guess I made a pretty bold statement that um, you know, Google ads works, right? And when we're thinking about keyword to keyword sales, so relevant audience, when we're thinking about what's fairly easy for us with limited bandwidth the sellers, um, Google ads to me is like the Holy grail, right? It's working for the majority of the products out there. You know, we showed some of the qualifications, but making that statement is cool. Being able to back it up is even cooler. So what we have now is we have some actual case studies of where we're running Google ads. And um, again, it is possible to do this yourself. Uh, we don't suggest it because we're, you know, our, our software and service, just shameless plug here, is the only one that can optimize for conversions, which really makes us powerful. Um, but Google ads seems to be the easiest way for Amazon sellers to leverage external traffic. And we want to go through some case studies with you now, some real life ones. So Clayton, if you want to start kind of explaining some of these. Yeah. And, you know, I think case studies can be fun for a little bit and then they can get real boring. I'll tell you guys, if you want to see more case studies, email me at the end and I can send you folders and folders full that Shannon and her team have been so gracious to build. But yeah, this is a tacos case study. Um, before anything, I want to point out here at the very bottom, it says the ACOS for this period was 82%. It ended at 82%. This was like a $15 product, right? Um, you know, if you're hoping for a 5% conversion rate, you're spending 20 bucks, close to 20 bucks to sell a $15 product. This guy understood the mission. He's like, listen, Clayton, I don't care if it's not profitable when you just look at Google to Amazon and that's it. If you look at that ACOS, he's like, but if you increase my rank, you increase my BSR, you decrease my tacos, I'll give you 10, 20, 30, 40 more products. It's exactly what we did. We took this guy from August to the end of October and his tacos was 14.75 and we brought it down to 6.47. Cut it. He already had a good tacos. We made it a great tacos. His BSR went from 101 to number four. We took him his rank on a 75,000 search volume keyword from number 11 to number four. This guy was happy as a clam, but he, if he would have just looked at ACOS in the beginning, the ACOS was like 120%. And then over time it got down to 82%, but he did not care. He said, listen, I have my tacos is decreasing. I'm selling more than I ever have. This is working. So the point here is pay attention to tacos for cheaper products, not ACOS. If you come to me and say, I want a 15 or 20% ACOS on a 10 or $15 product, I'm going to say you're crazy. And anybody else that is telling you they can do that for you is lying. So you need to partner with people that know what they're doing. Um, tacos case study number two, same thing. This ACOS ended at 147%. It was a $15, $10 product, but we use the automations that automatically pause keywords that are underperforming, that automatically walk down uh, bids on the keyword level. And then we automatically switch to optimization for conversion after 20 conversions in 40 days. And we tell the optimization for conversion in Google to walk down the cost per action. If it succeeds meeting a, our recommendation, we tell it to do better and better and better. 
And that's exactly what you can see here. But as time went on, we increased this organic rank and tacos decreased from 27% to 15, which is a 43% decrease, not numerically, but on a percentage basis, a 43% decrease in tacos. The BSR went from 744 to 300 something. Same story, different product. Tacos, 15% down to 7%. But the A cost on this product was 190. This guy got the this guy got the mission. Went from keyword now, number 29 to 18, 35 to 5, 8 to 5 on you know 40,000 search volume keywords when you add them together. And I know this is an instant, Clayton, but the 29 to 18, the 35 to 5, which is obviously first page, that didn't take forever, right? That took a uh, few months. Yeah, I, th that's the other thing. Good point. This does not happen in a week. Anybody saying they're going to do this for you in a week, they're lying to you too. And we say that the first month we're gaining a ton of information and teaching Google what it needs to know. And by day, like, and so month one is just data collection. Sometimes we see great results in, in month one, but I really tell people that this is like a four month journey. You know, you look at, and, and we prefer, uh, you know, people to, to come into this thinking I, I'm on a six month plan. That's really what we tell people, but we usually see great results around three month, three or four. Um, well, you're hopping around here, but yeah, this no, doesn't, the wrong button. Right? this, this happened from August to December. Perfect example, August 8th. And we brought his tacos down a little bit in uh, month one, but then by month two and three, we had it, you know, cut in half. Um, so yeah, this is a good example, but I, I tell people go into this thinking it's a four month plan. Four, five, six. Yeah, I, I don't want to share it here, but um, I asked Clayton for a spreadsheet, I don't know, a couple weeks ago, and he just sent me raw data of around 1,600 campaigns or ASINs that have campaigns currently running. And it was wild, the difference from month one to month two to month three. And sometimes even from, you know, the, the starting tacos, the first 30 days might go from... 31 to 33 percent as the whole system is optimizing and calibrating and then the second month that goes down to 15 and the third month that goes down to three like it's wild how big of a difference it makes in month two or three and even month four so have some patience because the optimization of the ads takes a little time and amazon has to start tracking that external traffic is coming in to start rewarding you with that all right and just to get through some of the last one if we can go back real fast this was a, an ACOS case study. If you give me products that are 4.3 stars and above and above $100, if anybody watching has a buddy with $100 plus products, this is what we can do. I took, this is 25 products. Now this company has 60 products as of today with us. The, pro, the ACOS, this is not tacos. This is just because it's an expensive product or high priced. We took ACOS from week one and 72% down to 48, all the way to week five, we were down to 12% ACOS. I didn't update this since December 7th or no, January 8th, but we're in, what are we in now? April 25th. I'm forgetting what the date is. Um, and their ACOS is now down to 1%. Like with the brand referral bonus, a lot of their products are infinite return on ad spend. Their brand referral bonus is outpacing their ad spend. Yeah. So they're, they're paying $5 or $6 to acquire a sale and they're getting $10 back because mm -hmm. it's a $100 product. So they're actually making money running ads, which is insane. Yep. Yeah, and we have, we have dozens of customers just like this, but this is our one of our uh, most famous ones because they have 60 products they just keep adding. They're going to 125 next month. So it's really cool. Um, it, just because I know we're running out of time and I want to leave time for Q&A. Let's go to the next yeah. one. So Key takeaways, Tim, yeah. Takeaway. yeah, so the big thing is if you're running any sort of traffic, make sure that you are uh, capturing as much of it as possible by uh, making sure, one, that you're completely optimized, titles, bullets, descriptions, for the keywords that people are actually looking for that aren't massively competitive, right? Use external ad platforms to drive the external traffic. We say ad platforms instead of just external traffic, not because the other sources don't work, but it's more difficult to connect keyword to keyword relevancy. And it's more difficult to um, actually get those things up and launched, right? Because some of that other stuff, the, uh, the TikTok ads, for example, takes so much effort getting the assets built. And then when you're running your external ads, use optimization for conversion campaigns, not optimization for click campaigns. That was the whole breakthrough that happened specifically with PixelMe. And, you know, when we're talking about this method, we're not just talking about PixelMe. We're talking about the method it just happens to be through PixelMe. Um, but it makes sense, right? If you can optimize for conversions, it's going to significantly increase your performance of everything. Um, and and then one final thought here we want to throw out. Yeah, thanks. I'll take this. Um, two huge like announcements and we haven't, uh, we, within 
one week we're expected to have optimization for conversion for meta ads. Up until now, we just had it for Google. So this is really, really cool. And at Pixel Me, we can run your Google ads for you. You don't have to touch anything. Completely, we'll, we'll manage it for you. Uh, but with meta ads and with TikTok, uh, we have partners, uh, Bullseye Partners, uh, Bullseye Sellers, as well as uh, more recently, Vendo. And the final thought here is that TikTok is blowing up. That's what this is saying. Um, and it's hard to measure. I'll be honest with you. It's hard to measure TikTok traffic to Amazon because for whatever reason, TikTok and Amazon do not play nicely together. But there are a lot of people out there that every single time they launch a product, they're using TikTok traffic. It's cheap. It appears to be very effective for increasing rank, but Amazon attribution doesn't uh, really measure it. So you're kind of blind. You have to look at different numbers like tacos. You can't look at conversion rates. You can't look at any of that because the, the clicks just Amazon attribution isn't able to pick up TikTok traffic like it is Google and Meta. And this is not a pixel me thing. This is everybody thing. Paul Rankster, uh, Lazar from Pendulum Ads. No, nobody can figure it out. So, but what's important is that TikTok is blowing up, not just sending traffic to Amazon. Do I think that's a very good idea? Yes. Are you going to have to measure it differently? Yes, but it can be done and people are doing it and seeing great results when they're measuring it the right way. And you can also just create a TikTok shop. Um, that's another option. So we have a partner, Vendo, where we have special rates with them. So if you guys are interested in TikTok, Carbon6 at this moment in time, at least, are, are not um, poised to really handle TikTok type traffic in, in a fantastic way. We can do it inside of PixelMe, but the measurement is not perfect. But if you guys are interested in TikTok, I just wanted to throw out there that Vendo does a fantastic job at this. And if you guys want any uh, special deals or pricing, or you're looking into doing more stuff with TikTok, um, I recommend going through Carbon6 to get some discounted pricing. So if any of you are interested in having us take a look, and we're going to answer some of these questions in a second, but um, take a look at some of your product opportunities. And that's all kept in a black box. I don't even get to see that stuff, right? Um, we're more than happy to do that for free to take a look. And Clayton runs that team and he'll give a very honest assessment. Um, people ask us, Hey, is this TOS approved? That's a big question because it honestly is so effective in ranking. And we've had people say, Hey, there's no way that this could be TOS approved. We had some concerns middle of last year that were raised to Amazon from some other folks in the industry that said, Hey, they must be breaking the rules. Amazon did like a two or three month analysis of what we were doing over at pixel me because we claimed some pretty bold things that we have something, the optimization for versions that nobody else has. And Amazon will never come out and say, hey, they're not breaking terms of service. But what they did say is, we're so impressed, we're going to increase your partnership level with us substantially. So we're software partners, we're a verified ads partner. Shortly after Google brought us in as a Google Click Tracker partner, Emerald brought us into, I'm sorry, Amazon brought us in a new program, the, the Amazon Emerald program. So if anybody says, hey, is this against terms of service? I'm going to say, look, after Amazon audited us and analyzed us for months, they created a higher partnership level with us. So pretty uh, pretty obvious what the answer is there. But yeah, use this QR code, or if any of you, if you don't want to scan the QR code, just in the chat, just respond yes or me, and we'll have someone reach out to you to do a free audit. And we can't look at a ton, but we'll look at a couple for you and send back uh, just really good information. Whether you you know actually move forward or not is up to you, but we'll send you information on keyword parity between Google and Amazon and a bunch of other cool information that's just good to look at. Anything else to add to that, Clayton? Um, no, but I would say that just I uh, wanted to clarify something for Irene, um, that it does work with Vendor Central. Amazon Attribution does work with Vendor Central. Oh, then I miss I miss uh, misrepresented there. My apologies. Yeah. Um, yep, that's it. Let's make sure uh, Irene's still on here. Yeah, she, she well, she she is because she said, yes, please reach out to me. Oh, so, OK. Sure. Irene, I stand corrected. Um, I mentioned earlier that we had more some more um, uh, resources. This is it. This is not you know, you don't have to pay for this. No gimmicks here. Um, scan this or in the comment section, send something like white paper or say something like white paper. And we can get you um, using the email that you signed up with as long as it matches your name. Uh, this white paper, which is great. We had a bunch of folks here at Carbon6 uh, collaborate, I almost said corroborate, collaborate to put this together. Great information. You can't beat it. Um, so that white paper for sure is is something that you and your entire team needs to go through. 
And one other thing I would say is that there's a couple of people that said, yes, I want to try pixel me. Yes, I want to try pixel me. Well, that, that's great. But what I'm seeing is it says anonymous attendee. <laughs> so I don't know what your name is. Um, so if, if you're showing up as an anonymous attendee, maybe just um, drop your email that way. Shannon can get us connected and, and we can get you set up. But just like Tim said, that that QR code is uh, will take care of you too. Yeah, I'll go back to that. Um, if you want that free ASIN audit. Now, I want to go through some questions. And some of them I have uh, kind of answered in type already, or you have as well. But I want to address one to start off with. It's from Devin Schultz. And he said, one thing that I have an issue with is we're spending money to still not gain customer data, or is there a way we can collect that? Might as well send them to our own website if we're referring the traffic, right? So this is the way I think about it. Is it valuable to have your own website? Yes. Is it valuable to have customer information? Yes. But I think the most important thing is to make money and to succeed. So can we capture customers' information when they click through those links using Pixelme? Not technically, right? We're not going to get their name. We're not going to get their uh, address, all the information that Amazon doesn't want us to have from the sale. But I consider that a fair trade-off for the increased organic ranking that we're going to get. So think about it this way. If I'm selling hammers and I have a hammer website and I'm running a Google ad for hammers, well, unless I'm ranking really high in SEO on Google, which most of us are never going to, right? Then I'm basically paying for every sale. So every sale to my website to sell my custom hammer, I'm having to pay a Google ad. But because of that halo effect for other keywords and that um, you know impact to organic ranking, there's probably 50,000 people a day or maybe a month probably 50,000 or 6,000 people a month searching for hammers on Amazon. So if we can drive that external traffic, maybe a hundred sales instead of to our website directly over that month, those hundred sales to Amazon through the attribution program and through um, that external traffic path. And we can move our hammer listing on Amazon from page 12 to page one. Well, now we've got 50,000 eyeballs a month that are potentially looking at our product. And if our listing's good and if our offer is good and if our product's good, those are sales we don't have to pay for. So, you know, kind of strategically high level, what you're paying for is visibility. And that payment is not getting the customer's information, which can be valuable. But frankly, even when I was using nefarious methods years ago to get that, I never used it anyways, right? It was kind of worthless to me because I never took action on it. It was much more valuable to drive to Amazon and get that, um, those organic sales because the eyeballs are already there. Whereas my website, there's not going to be eyeballs already, right? You're having to pay to play for every single one. That's my two cents on it. Yeah, and I would say too that um, just Amazon converts better. So if you have a if you have a larger goal to not put all your eggs in the Amazon basket, like so be it. But every time we've run this and we have case studies on this too, um, you're just the ROI is higher when you send the traffic to Amazon, e even with you know that instead of fifteen, you're paying five percent. And maybe you're paying two or three on Shopify. So there's still that spread, but the conversion is just higher. So like at the end of the day, the ROI, I mean, Amazon's king. And it continues to, to look that way. There yep. are clever things you can do too, to get emails. You have to pay extra, but there are one first party data providers. Tim nailed it. You're not going to get their name. You're not going to get their actual address, but you, you can pay for first party data providers that we're connected with for our emails, but it costs extra. It's like 10 cents an email. Okay. Um, I think the other questions were answered in the presentation. Some of them came early. So if anybody has a last minute question, drop it here. I kind of want to finish up within the hour, which is in two minutes. So unless we get uh, another question right now, we'll go ahead and wrap it up. But thank you all for being on. Um, it's amazing how many people stayed to the end. And again, my measure of success is if you got one nugget, if you got one piece of information, if you got one good piece of advice or something you can actually take to your business, so if any of you feel like there wasn't one tiny little thing that you picked up on, send me a message on LinkedIn and let's battle it out and argue about it because I would I would bet that that's not the case. I don't think there's a single person that can't get that. Um, I've seen stuff like this before, you know, presentations like this before and just listening to Clayton talk, I learned things today. I had no idea that you could run this on Vendor Central, for example, of one of the many things I learned. So hopefully everybody um, enjoyed that. Uh, getting some good comments. Mark says, awesome. Thanks for doing this. Greg says, was good. Thanks. Glenn said, thanks. Devin says, good breakdown. That's awesome. Um, so far, no naysayers, Clayton. 
so we'll go ahead and sign off now. Thanks everybody for being here. Appreciate all the love that, uh, um, all of you, uh, you know, showed us by being here and thanks for our marketing team over at carbon six for putting this together for us and running on the back end and helping a lot of you in the chat. We couldn't do this without them. And, uh, Devin's headed back to Mars apparently. So we'll close off on that. Thanks everybody. Yeah. Thanks guys. And feel free to add me on LinkedIn as well. Thanks for uh, listening. Really appreciate everybody's time.